Hello friends, in today's chapter we are going to talk about amplification, how a triode amplifies. We see that depends on the bias point we decide to work, we can get very different results. First, let's check how to bias a triode. We must remember that bias voltage in a triode is the difference between grid and cathode voltage. And for a proper operation of the tube, this voltage must be negative. This is, the cathode voltage always must be greater than the grid voltage. So, in these pictures, if we maintain the difference between grid and cathode constants, the result will be the same. Ok, in a real circuit, the easiest way to bias a triode is polarize the cathode with a resistor. So we can get a certain positive DC voltage, usually around 1 volt, and the grid is connected to ground, but with an AC component that will alter the bias point according to how this AC voltage changes. is the schematic of our real circuit for testing how a triode behaves. On the left we see a sign voltage source that imitates the signal of a guitar pickup. Resistor R3 is the grid looking and its value determines the input impedance of the circuit. Usually is 1 meg. This resistor is R2, grid stopper. By now we say that this resistor communicates the input signal to the grid. Resistor R4 is the bias resistor or the cathode resistor. When the tube is heated and the power supply is connected, certain current goes from the plate to the cathode. And by ohm's law, certain DC voltage appears in the resistor that polarizes the cathode. In a 12AX7, this cathode voltage will be around 1 volt, and the current from plate to cathode will be around 1 milliamp. Another resistor that we need for polarized the triode is R1, the plate resistor. A standard value is 100K. This resistor limits the current through the tube. Higher values implies less current. The last resistor is R5, the log resistor. We'll see its function later. In the circuit appears two capacitors. C2 is the cathode capacitor or bypassing cap. It is needed for two things. One is maintain constant the cathode voltage, and the other is contacts the AC component to ground. The effect of this capacitor is increase the gain and maintain more stable the bias point. C3 is the coupling cap and it's needed for carries the signal to the next stage but without DC component, only AC component. Let's see how a trail amplifies in the plate characteristic. Well, we suppose point A is our bias point and we have a load line. If no voltage change in this circuit, the plate voltage is near 200 volts and constants. Now suppose the bias voltage change from 1.5 volts negative to 0 volts. Then the plate voltage will decrease from 200 to near 100 volts. In the same way, if we stay in point A and the bias voltage decreases another 1.5 volts, reaching 3 volts negative, 
the plate voltage increases to 275 volts. We have to say that a chain in the bias voltage is to say that the grid voltage change because cathode voltage remains constant. This means that when a positive voltage appears in the grid, the bias point decreases. It's easy to see that this amplification is not symmetric. The positive part of the signal is bigger than the negative part. This is a characteristic of how a tube amplifies. This amplification is very different to transistor or digital amplification. Ok, the result if we have an amplified signal in the anode that is inverted, very much higher and a little deformed. The gain voltage in this case is around 60. This is a typical value for a 12AX7. In this picture we can see all of these phenomena. To finish today's video, let's do a simulation and see the result. First, we put a sine wave of 1 volt and 1 kilohertz. This is the DC value in the operating point. We have 1.4 volts of bias point in the cathode and 185 volts of play voltage. The sine voltage source is only AC, no DC voltage. Because the grid voltage can vary between 1 volt negative to 1 volt positive, the bias voltage varies from 1.4 volts to 1 volt more and 1 volt less. Let's check it. This is the sine wave I put of the voltage source. The maximum is 1 volt, the minimum is 1 volt negative, and it is centered at 0 volts. This is the anode voltage, it's bigger and inverted. It has a DC component of 185 volts, that is the voltage of the operating point, and goes from near 120 volts to 240 volts, very big. After the coupling cap C1, we have only AC component. We see that now it's centered at 0 volts, but the AC is exactly the same. If we check the amplitude, 
we observe that the negative part is 10 volts bigger than the positive one. Well, for today is enough. Bye bye.